Hello everybody and welcome back to another Prehistoric Kingdom video, Thrive here, and uh, on today's video, while I may be a little late to the party with this one, I'm not too late, anyway though, we'll be doing the new June devlog that came out not too long ago, um, again, I'm a little late, It's a, they, I know they posted it a little bit later than usual, and that's mainly because uh, I believe the editor who made the, the um, the editor who, make the, who makes the dev logs was sick. Uh, gee, I wonder what from. But um, anyway, though, I'm just going to dive right on into this. We're going to take a look at everything that the month of June has to offer. And yeah, and then we'll get ready for next month. So let's go ahead and begin. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and begin this dev log by talking about how well, after I read all, I read all the way through it, of course, and um, I've decided to make things easier on myself. I'm going to organize everything. Basically, I've taken everything I've read from the devlog and organized it into a uh, number of things we're going to take a look at. First things first, the major stuff. We're going to look at everything that's majorly important about the devlog, um, such as the new animal locomotion, water painting, fence junction, etc. All those big important things. And then after that we'll take a look at the minor stuff that I probably won't go nearly as in depth with, but some of those things include the Brachiosaurus footage, some of the social change, the animal animation and showcases, the more basic stuff. And then we're going to end on a developmental report as does every um, every every devlog they have. And there's always a developmental report so you get the general idea of where the game is. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and begin with the animal locomotion. So basically, the animal locomotion is in which an animal in the game will shift its direction. You know, this is something in Jurassic Evolution and Planet Zoo, all these games. Every game that has a creature in it, um, that's the main focus, has this kind of uh, shift animation to it. However, they are doing it different. Based on what they said right here, and I'll just go ahead and read this, they said, we're shifting towards a system that's more reliant on bespoke animation for traditions rather than allowing the engine to fill in the gaps, giving us direct control over how an animal begins or stops moving. The creatures can have great art assets, but if locomotion isn't up to the same standard, it falls apart. Essentially, what all this is saying is that the animal locomotion is going to be more... Uh, natural. Basically, it's just a big sum it up. They're making the animals, how the animals shift and change direction to be, to look a lot better, a lot easier, and something more natural. And you can tell right now, just by this footage. Alright guys, can we just first talk about how amazing that footage was? Truly beautiful, and honestly, you got a good feel of how the game is going to be. You also get a good feel of how the locomotion works, and uh, just as I said, it looks a lot better than your typical game. The junk seems to be removed, and it looks pretty natural. But anyway though, not much more else to say about this topic, let's go ahead and move on to the next, which would be fence junctions. Alright, so fence junctions. There's not a whole lot to say about this, because, you know, it's, it's just fence junctions. This is something Jurassic World Evolution had, but based on what I've already read, theirs is definitely a bit more realistic, and just by this picture right here, it looks really good. It looks real. I mean, I can imagine if these were real fences and they would be put together, and of course, again, this will all happen whenever you just take a fence and drag it up to another fence and uh, connects up. I guess you can have a total of at least four fences all connecting, connecting to each other, maybe more, but um, it looks real, it really does, and I'm just saying if this had to be real, that's probably how it would look. So yeah, anyway, just them taking more time to put in extra, more important details to subtle things like this. Alright guys, so next is water painting. Now this is really impressive stuff, really important stuff too, I mean, the ability to create good water in a game like this is, it needs to be done right, and it definitely is. Now just by this footage right here, you could just tell a lot of a lot of stuff is happening. Basically, of course, we got uh, as far as like the tools go and how it how it'll work. It's very similar to Planet Zoo. You have size, you have you have intensity, and it, it does appear to have three types of water. And uh, I think I last I check, one is fresh, one is salt, and one is brackish. Um, now, what I find really impressive about this footage is how you can actually um, move the terrain under the water and through the water. 
that's nothing that's something I've never seen in the game before so really impressive there um, but yeah overall water system in this game is gonna be very top-notch I think we can all safely say that all right next we have a new environment for them to show the last devlog last I checked we checked uh, tropical and coastal now we've got grassland and uh, of course just as we'd expect these pictures are gorgeous especially this one this is my favorite picture of all the new pictures of this biome it, it just I mean look at that shot that grass the elephant grass and the yellow grass together it looks so beautiful it totally reminds me of Africa um, so again just phenomenal work on the environment they have just gone all out on plants it looks gorgeous right I think we can all agree of course we also got a great shot of the baobab tree so we could definitely, if we wanted to, make a Madagascar environment, of course, because that's where ba Baobabs come from. Now, uh, it does make me wonder, maybe one day we could expect to see creatures like Majungasaurus in the game, or... I, I don't know, but there's not really any... Uh, last I checked, there's no Madagascar prehistoric creatures in the game, so... Yeah, future content. Okay guys, so next up we are going to be talking about the ground feeders. They have been updating the food production of the game, and here's what they have to say about them. Switching to a slightly tastier subject, last month we laid out the design plans for feeding as a whole. Determining how the process of food production, delivery, and consumption will work, as a result the ground feeders were homogenized in order to account for these plans and will work better with the ontogeny to prevent ex excess clipping or animation that simply wouldn't work across multiple designs. So basically they have updated the fooding, food system, the production of it, and it looks really impressive. Um, very reminiscent of Planet Zoo in my opinion. And just by this picture right here, we get a full look at all five diets in the game. You got your Piscivore diet, you got your Carnivore diet, you got your Insectivore diet, um, Frugivore, or was it called Fructivore, and your Herptivore, or Herbivore diet, my bad. So um, I really like this. This kind of stuff gets me all excited for it because this feels real you know you're taking care of diets you have certain diets for your creatures and you're you're trying to keep them alive it's it's it feels real and that's what I really like not gonna lie these pictures are really actually really awesome looking these diets the, the just the trays with the food it looks very real um, that's what I like now as far as how the production will go I believe we do have keepers and they will come in and they will feed the uh, they will put the food on the tray just like Planet Zoo but dinosaur edition <laughs> And uh, speaking of new ground feeders, we also have a new updated look at the animal nursery. Now as far as how this is going to go, here's what they have to say. As a part of the park asset work reworking, Nathan's taken the previous design of our animal nursery and elevated it to a new heights, literally. A cornerstone piece of the infrastructure for every player, this building's been updated with a more grounded art direction, an attempt to find that balance between a lovely genetics facility and a giant warehouse for mega lizards. Alright, so guys, the animal nursery looks awesome. Very reminiscent of Jurassic World Evolution, especially with that little opening where the dinosaurs will actually come out. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate what they were trying to do. They were trying to find a nice balance between what is essentially a, a, a very nice looking genetics facility and just, a, as I said, a giant warehouse for mega lizards. It's really well done, but I am hoping that we can find or have, or we can build our own perhaps simpler model. Can you imagine if we just take the core port? core part of um, the animal nursery and make a Jurassic Park version of it because I assume many people are going to try and build Jurassic Park and this kind of building would certainly not fit the theme but maybe it'll be an option maybe there'll be an, uh, an old version and a new version and we're looking at the new version who knows but uh, anyway though by this picture right here you can see the Brachiosaurus is trying to walk out right now oh it looks so cool it really does also those walls have got to be gigantic Anyway though, now along with a look at how the animal nursery is on the outside, why don't we take a look at the inside by this footage right here.
So with the outside of the nursery looking really good, how about the inside? Well, it looks awesome. Honestly, the UI is completely up to date and there's something so clean and efficient about how we make our creatures. I really love how we get a full look at all the details in every creature we want to make. You can choose male between female, the size, and the skins, and I really like how each skin is a little different for every gender, or well, for either gender. It's really, it's just, again, it feels really efficient, and I'm honestly excited to go and just make some new creatures, right? Aren't all of us? Uh, but yeah, but now that we've took a look at pretty much all the major things, let's go ahead and just shift on over to the minor parts of this new devlog. Alright, this is the fourth to last thing, but basically we have a change in the temperature and biomes and the social requirements. Now, I'm not really going to talk too much about this, but I guess they have reorganized how this is going to work in the game. And it's not really a major thing to talk about, but here, here is the text that they have said about the change in temperature and biomes. Um, and last I checked, actually, the next... Um, the next, and I think the final biome we'll be taking a look at, and hopefully the next month month's dead, um, devlog is going to be wetland, because I believe we've taken a look at desert, we've seen scrubland, grassland, tropical, coastal, temperate, and boreal, but I don't think we have seen wetland yet. Anyway, though, hopefully you read it here, hopefully you have read it for yourself, um, I'm not gonna, again, I'm, not, I'm just not gonna dive into it, but there, while there's a change in temperature and biomes, there's also a change in how the social requirements will work. Again, nothing really, really important to talk about, so you can just read it for yourself. Um, and now, Besides these two things, we also have new animal showcases, and they like to do this every month. They just go in and update the models of some creatures. It's great, it really is. Um, we have an updated Platyosaurus model, and that's it. <laughs> Not too many animal showcases, and there really hasn't been too much talk about the creatures ever since they have finished up the full species profile listing. You know, they went from 1 to 50, and they finished that like two devlogs ago now, so we've just been getting a couple updated models but anyway though platyosaurus does look great and along with some of these new animations between the ankylosaurus and the brachiosaurus we also have a new footage of the brachiosaurus actually walking it's it's a walk test and it is everything it's beautiful um i'm not going to say anything about it besides the fact that it's beautiful but i'm just going to go ahead and play the footage for you guys right now Alright guys, so yeah, that footage was amazing and all, but now we take a look, we're going to finish the video with the developmental report, and we're going to talk about everything that we've seen in this whole devlog. So, of course, we're still working on pre-alpha too, and they haven't really said anything this month about when we can expect a release date, people constantly keep asking me about when the release date is, I honestly don't know, it's a, it's still to be determined, but, again, still on pre-alpha too, this month they especially focused on animal locomotion and water painting. That was very obvious, but they also focused on fence system, user interface, atmospherics, or um, optimization. And as far as art, of course, we got another look at the uh, a new biome, animal assets such as new the nursery updation. Uh, yeah, the updating updating the nursery, the food, uh, how the food production will work, everything. It it is a it has been actually a bigger month than the last one. I feel like there was more to look at. And honestly, I am very excited for July. I love it when these new I love it when these devlogs come out. It's just it's fun to go and take a look at how this game's doing. I have a very strong feeling that we will get this game either by the end of the year, the very end of the year, or sometime in like spring of 2021. I hope the uh, virus hasn't affected them too much, but I don't think it's going to stop them. Of course, this game is still going to come out and it's still going to be one of the best dinosaur games of all time in my opinion. Alright guys, so this will be the end of the video here. Thank you all so much for watching this one. This has been a really cool devlog for the month of June. Let me know what was your favorite part about this devlog. And uh, honestly, I'm very excited for the month of July. I will talk about that one, of course. And uh, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. P please remember to hit the like button, subscribe. Check out my Discord in the description down below. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Goodbye.